Forrester, TCS Honcho. Time for another installment of Metal on Metal, TCS Talk. We're going to be continuing with our introduction to the TCS system, and today we're going to talk about shooting stuff. This is units or chapters 19 through 14, or sections 19 through 14 in the book. If you want to follow along, we have a lot to do today because we're going to cover many, many things. First of all, we're going to discuss how fire combat works in general. We're going to talk about how you inflict losses that come from fire combat on units. We'll talk about the two types of fires that occur in the TCS, area fires and point fires. That's not counting artillery. These are direct fires we're talking about. And then we're going to talk about two of the three ways to conduct these fire actions. One is suppressive fire actions. Those are for area fires, SFAs. The other are point fire actions, PFAs. We're not going to discuss overwatch. That'll come up in the next section. Some basics on fire combat. There are two kinds of fires, A fires, area fires, and P fires. If you look at the, um, these are in fire mode, both of these units here, the white uh, number indicates that this is an area firer, and the yellow number indicates that that's a point firer. Area, well, actually, both types can conduct SFAs, suppressive fire actions. It's not just area fire units. Point fires can also do so. And they just use their rating here to the fire strength of two and the fire strength of, obviously, for area fires. Point fire actions are heavier weapons shooting at single targets, and those can only be conducted by point fire types. So you have to have the yellow number here in order to conduct a PFA. Two other types of fire combat that we won't talk about here, overwatch, which I mentioned just a second ago, and also assaults and overruns, which are combats that take place in hex. We'll deal with those later in this series of introductions. Remember, with um, firing, you, you need to chain, uh, check the line of sight. We've already talked about that. And if you're adjacent, you can always see other units. There are some cases when you use observers rather than fires. And these are when you're use, using units to observe for mortar fires or artillery fires. We won't talk about those. But um, you'll have observers as well. And that's you use range and spotting from the observer, not from the firing unit. In order to fire, a unit must be in fire mode. There is an exception in assault combat, which we'll talk about later, but for 98% of the situations in the TS, you must be, TCS, you must be in fire mode. Units that are paralyzed, this is a morale, morale state we'll talk about later, cannot fire uh, SFAs or PFAs. They can only fight in uh, close combat in assaults or overruns. If you've infantry units mounted in carriers, they can only fight in assaults in their hex. They can't shoot out to range. Obviously, if you're towing an AT gun or towing some sort of artillery, it can't fire while it's being towed. It needs to be in fire mode instead. And uh, I mentioned just a second ago that point fires, fire area fires, normally the only modifier there is AT guns themselves have their fire strength halved when they're shooting area fires. Uh, there are a few games that have exceptions when uh, it was historically documented that the AT guns had a lot of uh, high explosive rounds with them, but generally didn't have enough so that they're halved in their strength. With fire types, we also have target types. And area fires, fires spray uh, wep bullets, and area targets are widely dispersed infantry targets. Point fires shoot heavy caliber uh, munition, and point targets are heavily armored targets. Area fires can affect area targets and B0 targets. They can also affect B1 targets if all the fires are infantry platoons. That is, that they have a range greater than 6. And then point fires can affect all target types. Let's look at some of the modifiers. We talked about terrain already. You check your target mode and what terrain the target is in. What's also important here is whether the uh, with low trajectory fires, and those are units that have uh, a black in their range. These are like machine guns and that sort of thing. Uh, can be negatively affected if there are no spotted targets. So if you're shooting at an infantry, infantry platoon in the open in fire mode, that's going to be a zero um, modifier. So this really that's kind of your standard sort of attack. If you're firing at infantry in move mode, you're going to have a plus two. So they're more vulnerable that way. If you're shooting at uh, an infantry that's dug in and not spotted in protective terrain, you're at a minus eight column shift, and you'll find that that's going to be pretty pretty useless shooting at different range. You really want to close with those targets. So when you're doing area fires, check, or any fires, well, you got to check the terrain in the mode. Um, now, suppose you get a result in the fire table, which we'll look at in a little bit. 
Um, the losses are inflicted in steps. Infantry, infantry platoons have five steps, unless otherwise noted. Mortars in machine gun sections have two steps. Vehicles have the number of steps printed on the counter. So right here we see that this is four steps. Guns generally have one step, unless otherwise noticed. And you inflict losses by putting loss markers on the thing. So if it's an infantry platoon that starts at full strength and you inflict one loss, put a loss marker like this one, that means it is one step less. These losses have effects. Uh, if it's a unit that's, uh, that suffers morale effects, each loss will add one to its morale value, and that's bad. If you have multiple units stacked, uh, inflict the first loss from the area fire table, certainly, on the largest target in the hex. And after that, if suppose you hit a, a enemy target, it's an area target with a couple of units in the stack, and you inflict three losses. How do you inflict those? The first loss goes on the largest unit. The second loss, the defender decides which unit it comes from, any, any eligible target in the hex. And then the third loss, the fire decides which one, and then you alternate back and forth. If you inflict a loss on a carrier that's carrying units, then you inflict a loss on the carried units in the same proportion. So if it is, um, say, a carrier with two steps and it's carrying a five-step platoon, if you hit it for one uh, step, so the carry is reduced from two to one, you're going to have to inflict half the steps on the platoon. And since it's five, we're going to round that up to three, so it will lose three steps. With point fires, it's a little different. Um, the fire gets to decide the first loss, and then the defender decides the next loss. So it's a little bit more advantageous to the fire. Of course, the point fires are more well-aimed, and they see the targets better. So let's talk about area targets. If you are firing at a target hex, group any A and eligible B targets together, and you affect the whole stack so you don't hit individual units. The range is printed on the units here, so this is a, a range of five. Uh, well, sorry, that's the morale. This here is a range of six, and that black indicates that it's a, a low trajectory fire. With vehicles, uh, the range is a little different. The range here is four, but that's the so-called nominal range. Um, vehicles can actually, or point fires, can shoot out to two times that. So for firing an air fire, the range of this tank is actually eight. If you have steps in the vehicle, such as this tank unit here, you add the area of fire for each step. So if this is full strength, this is tank is going to have an area of fire strength of 12, three times four. Low trajectory fires are important because they can affect crossfire modifiers, which I'll talk about briefly, and they also um, affect the terrain table if, it's, if the target is unspotted. There are a lot of negative modifiers if you're firing low trajectory fires. Units that um, are affected by area fires can also take morale hits, most of them. I mean, there are some carriers that won't. But this unit here has a morale of five and it is affected. If it, if it takes any hit on the area fire tape, on the fire table, it will have to conduct a morale check. So there's the terrain chart we were talking about briefly before. Notice these hefty, hefty modifiers for low trajectory fire against unspotted targets. That can really make it difficult to do any damage to a target hex. Here are the range modifiers. Check the range of the, the worst range modifier in play. So if you have multiple um, hexes firing, check out the modifier for each of the units firing and use the worst one if you group it all together in a fire. Some other modifiers, infantry units, if they're at close range, get to add the number of steps if they're at zero or half their steps if they're at range one. And this represents the grenades and bazookas and sort of close range tactics that the infantry can conduct. Also check the stacking, and these are of eligible targets. So if you're firing an A fire, an area fire, and there are P targets in the hex, you're not gonna count the stacking value of those P targets because they're not affected. You'll see here that this can get very ugly very quickly. That's why I mentioned way early on in this series, theoretically, you can stack 30 steps in a hex, but if you do that, any fires you take are really going to hammer you. So in practice, you will find that uh, this range here, 3 to 4, 5 to 7, in some games with very close range, especially, say, in some of the, the games that take place in the Pacific Theater in World War II, um, where the Japanese aren't affected too much by morale being stacked, you'll find bigger stacks of 10 and even up to 15. But th these modifiers are really quite brutal once you get up a lot of units in the stack. The asterisk, asterisk result applies 
to mortars and artillery, and that is if they're sort of area, uh, large, um, high trajectory area fires, if no one's spotted. So if you're more dispersed and they can't see you, it's harder to inflict any damage. A few other modifiers. This table here of other modifiers of fire, uh, applies to both area fires and point fires. You can check these out. They're fairly obvious for the most case. The one here I've got an image for is for um, what's called a crossfire. If you have fire coming from a couple of different hex sides, if it's wide enough dispersed, then the enemy is going to have a hard time finding a defensive position there that's not vulnerable to one or the other. And essentially, you check 30 degree modifiers, and if there's five points, like you see right here, then you get the crossfire modifier. So if it's fires coming from here and there, or a greater arc, you get a crossfire. The red is not quite there because you see one, two, three, four, and we don't quite get to the fifth, so that would not get the crossfire modifier. The crossfire applies to both area fires and point fires. You'll find that it's a very, very important way to dislodge an opponent from being dug in in heavy terrain. You've got to get around, well, you've got to get crossfire modifiers and you have to get really close. Here's a look at the fire table. This has a lots of different columns. And what you do is for area fires at the top, you can count up the total strength of the attack. That will give you a beginning column. And then you apply the modifiers left and right until you end up with a final column. Then you roll the D11 to 66. So suppose we're in the 21 to 25 column. And if I roll a, a 38, 36, you can't roll a 38. 36 will be between 31 and 54. I check to the right, and that results in a minus one step loss and morale check. So let's have an example here. Uh, these two German units are firing on dug-in Canadians. This is from Canadian Crucible. And dug-in in protective terrain is really tough. The range modifier, the range is two. These are infantry units. If you check your chart out, the range modifier is going to be a plus one, which is, is good. It helps. The total fire strength is 14. Here's 7, and here's 7. This is not a crossfire. If you check the points, 1, 2, 3. There's only 3 points there. The unit would have to be here or further over to get a crossfire modifier. If you check the spotting table, you will find that the spotting range for dug-in infantry in protective terrain is 1. It starts at 3, shifts 1 for the terrain, shifts 1 for being dug in. This target is not spotted currently. Uh, if you check the terrain table, you will find that the modifier for being dug in in protective terrain is minus 8. So our total attack is going to start in the 14 column, plus 1 shift for the range, minus 8 for the terrain, minus 7 columns, and I think it's the 3 column last I checked. So that's going to be a, it's going to take a long time to dislodge that platoon using the 3 columns. It's not that effective. Let's change it up just a little bit, though. Let's look at another example. The same thing, and we've added two extra elements. One, uh, a German platoon has closed uh, to range one. And the second is that they've brought in some machine gun support from the flank. Now, our range modifier here is zero. This platoon has a plus two for range. This one has a plus one. And this low trajectory fire has a zero. Remember, you have to use the worst one of all the firing units. So that would be zero. Our fire strength is now 19. <laughs> you ask, how is that? 7 plus 7 is 14 plus 2 is 16. Can Forrester not count? I can. Remember, it's range 1 with an infantry platoon, and you get half the steps rounded up. It's a 5-step unit, so you get to add plus 3, and this represents grenades and other close combat effects. We now do have a crossfire. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 points. That's going to give us a plus 4 modifier and actually help with the, with the morale check, which is lower, too. We have a unit at range 1. This target is now spotted. So the modifier for being dug in is not minus 8 anymore. It's minus 5. So this attack is now on the 19 column and gets a minus 1 total because we have a plus 4 for the crossfire and a minus 5 for the target being dug in. And now we're on the 14 column. So you can see in the TCS, maneuver is really, really important. Those two small changes, bringing in flank support and moving one guy into range 1 to identify the target better, really multiplied the impact of their fire several times. Now let's take a look at point fires, how they work. This uh, One big difference is rather than counting the fire strength like we do with area fires, we simply count the number of steps firing. And you, what about strength? You'll see that in a second. 
The range effects are also a little different. They have to do with the range of P fires, which are close, nominal, and long. What are those? Nominal is the printed uh, range on the unit. Close is half that, and long is twice that. So if we have a unit with a, a nominal range of 4, close is range is 0 to 2, and long is 5 to 8. You take the lowest fire strength of the firing units, and you subtract the highest defense strength of the defending units, and that's going to give you the point fire differential right here. So this is where you want a better fire strength because you're going to get a better modifier on the table. It's going to be able to crack hard, uh, heavier armor better. In uh, opposition to area fires, which have to attack all the targets, you may select targets for point fire. So if a hex contains, say, AT guns and tanks, you can decide to just shoot at the AT guns, which are going to be easier targets to kill if you want. Point fires never result in morale checks, and they use the other mods, including crossfire mods, from the other mods table. Now here's an example. We use this one right here, and this counts the number of steps. So this is one firing step, two, three, four, etc. I've actually never <laughs> seen anyone fire with 13 to 20 steps before, but theoretically it's possible. So again, what's different with area fires, you count the fire strength of all the units. With point fires, you count the number of steps, and then you take the lowest strength fire and subtract the highest defense strength to get a column modifier. Let's take a look at an example here. We've got uh, some Shermans. There are three of them engaging some Panthers. There are two. If um, we check the range for both, the range is five hexes. That's the nominal range for here, and that's well within the nominal range for the Panther. The differential is going to be plus two for the Panther, five minus three, or minus four, which is, a, if you look at the table, three shooting at five is minus two, but if you then look at the table, it'll see that's a modifier of minus four. The terrain posture is going to be the same for both. They're in fire mode in the open. So the German, the Shermans, if they fire, you look up the three-step column, but apply minus four shifts for the fire differential. If the Panthers fire, you start at the two column for point fires, and you add plus two column shifts. And you'll see that the Panthers are about twice to three times as effective as the Shermans. And this really fits with the historical, at least the anecdotal uh, data that you get from tankers then is that you wanted a three to one ratio of Shermans versus Panthers to engage them successfully. So what did we talk about here? We talked about how you shoot stuff. We talked about fire combat, how to inflict losses, how area fires work, how point fires work. We talked about suppressive fire actions being a way you can get multiple units from multiple hexes to fire together as area fire. Point fires is the same thing, but, but firing against a point target with point fire units. The next topic we have is Overwatch, because once you start shooting, the enemy likes to shoot back.